Hey everybody, it's Brad with the Big Family Homestead and today, ladies and gentlemen, I have yet another special treat for you. We are dealing with the man, the myth, the legend, Aaron from BarnGeek.com. How are you today, sir? I'm doing great, Brad. Thanks uh, for having me on again. Appreciate it. Well, I got to tell you what, man. Honestly, it is my privilege because... Every time I go to your website and start looking around, uh, well, two things happen right off the bat. First of all, I, I have this desire to, to live in a barn, a barn that you've built. And then the second thing that happens is that I, I, I quickly realize that if I let my wife see any more of your website, I will have to take on three jobs to make that goal happen. So thank you very much, sir. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> so, but we're not actually talking about full size barns today. Today, we're talking about something a little bit more um, that would fit in my budget. And we're going to be talking today about chicken coops. Now, tell me about your experience in chicken coops because you've told me on on occasion that this these designs you've come up with have not been just out of your head. These are from experience. Yeah, I kind of started, well, back when I was a kid, um, long, long time ago, <laughs> I started uh, um, I, I really liking chickens. I guess I was kind of fascinated by them. Um, I grew up on a small dairy farm, and we had a few chickens, but uh, I wanted to get those special ones, you know. So I wrote to, this is before the internet, I wrote to all the... Um, catalog companies and uh and sent in for the free catalogs and i got i got those catalogs and i poured over them and i learned everything i could about chickens and then later on i'd, I'd order some and i got i've got i got some in uh that i used for 4-h and i just just been working with chickens off and on all my life later on when i grew up and started my own homestead i uh I, I, we started raising chickens. We started having them in a stationary coop, which the big problem with that was that um, them being in a one spot all the time, you had to clean the coop out all the time. You know, you're constantly trying to keep ahead of that chicken manure. It kind of stinks if you don't get to it right away. So I, you know, just uh, doing some research, I, I discovered chicken tractors. So I figured I'd build a few of my own. I experimented with a few and kind of refined it over the years until I got to one or, or a few handful of, of designs that, that worked really well. And so, uh, so that's kind of how I started with that. Um, uh, and that way, you know, with a chicken tractor, you can move the, the, the chicken coop every day. And so you're not cleaning up manure, it just stays in one spot, you move it to the next spot, and the chickens do their thing that day. They work up the ground, you know, kind of work for you. And then uh, the next day, they move. You know, you move, keep moving them, and, and that way the chicken manure has a chance to break down and um, and uh, uh, benefit the soil and um, make it so you don't have to clean up after the chickens all the time. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, as fun as cleaning up after chickens is, I, for some reason, don't like doing it unless I have to. So I love the idea of any kind of, uh, well, aid, I guess, if you will, that will help me get more done with less work. And so now I've seen that you have, I mean, you've built the Joel Salatin style chicken tractors, but you've taken this to a whole new level. So tell me about the progression of your designs. Well, um, I've got a couple of chicken tractor designs in the library. One is a 36 inch by six foot long chicken tractor. It's just for two or three hens, three or four hens, depending on their size. And that's kind of designed for the backyard kind of uh, uh person that just wants to have a few you know maybe they have a city lot they just want to have a few hens just to you know three or four eggs a day um and then they can feed their chicken scrap or their kitchen scraps to the chickens and um <clears throat> that one has an has a nesting box it has a little 
platform on the upper level it has a little nesting box in it and a little roost and uh, it's designed I designed it three feet wide so that you could make you could kind of run it between rows of uh, uh, rows in your garden so if you had uh, you know a couple rows of uh, uh, tomatoes or something that are 36 inches apart you know well probably more than that because the coop is 36 inches so maybe 40 or 48 inches apart and then the ch what the chickens do is they go through and they'll they'll till up that ground they'll they'll dig up all the uh, um, all the uh, uh, weeds for you or a lot of them as long as you stay ahead of it and then uh, as they manure they'll fertilize your garden for you so it's kind of a win-win with that design in, in gardening so and then uh, the Joel Salatin style, I, I liked Joel Salatin's chicken tractor, the, the big one that, you, that, you, that he has 75 birds in and he moves it, you know, every day uh, for meat production. But I thought, man, 75 birds is really kind of a lot for, for me to handle from, by myself, you know, or for, you know, a small family to have or even a big family. It's just providing their own meat. I got to thinking, man, we only eat one chicken a week, so if we can raise 50 chickens a year in two batches, we only need room for 25 chickens at a time. So I scaled it down so it's 6 foot by 8 foot or 6 foot by 10 foot, you know, depending on how many birds you want to put in at a time. And um, the 6 foot by 8 foot will, will, will hold 25 meat birds. And that one is, is super lightweight, and you can move it around every day. My 7-year-old daughter can move it. Um, so I, so that kind of, uh, uh, took that Joel Salatin concept, pasture poultry concept and scaled it down to the backyard, uh, level with that design. Um, then I have the other coops are more of a stationary coop, but the, uh, those are the two tractors that are in the plans or in the library. And then, uh, I have one coop that's a four foot by four foot. Or you could expand it to a little bit larger, four foot by six foot. It's kind of a breakdown uh, chicken coop, so it's it's panelized. What what you would do is you you could kind of put it together in like six different panels, floor, the walls, and the ceiling or the roof. And um, and what you would do is you would put deep bedding in the bottom. It's kind of a winter coop for for chickens. So you, so if you want to keep them in one place in the winter time. They'll have a place underneath they can get and scratch around. And then the, on the ups, upside, they'll have their nesting box and food and water and that type of thing. And then when they, in the spring, when they've built up, you know, a thick layer of deep bedding with manure and that type of thing, then you can take the panels apart, move the chicken to, coop to a new spot, and then you have your, you know, basically your start of a compost pile that you can you know, work around with a fork and you won't have the coop in your way anymore. It'll be into, into a new spot where the chickens can start working, working it again. So there's that one. So it's kind of a, you know, you could have the, the chicken tractor during the summer going and then have the panelized coop in the winter time, depending on where you live, it's cold out. You know, you kind of want your chickens in one place to keep each other warm and, and kind of more enclosed so that they're not losing heat. And so that's the way that one's designed. I'm in Michigan here, so the winters are kind of, kind of chilly. So I, I like to have them together. And uh, but uh, but yeah, that one um, is uh, uh, also available in the Chicken Coops Library. And let's see. Oh, we have the uh, the 10 by 12 timber shed chicken coop mansion that's in there, and that's kind of that's one that we just added. And it's really, it's a big shed. It's one of our shed plans that I, that I put in there. But you could put, you know, your garden tools, your chicken feed. You can put a little spot for your chickens in there. If you've got a goat, you could put the goat in there. It's really kind of a, a nice little homesteader shed for the small backyard operation. Um, <clears throat> so there's that one. That's a stationary coop, obviously. And then, uh, then there's the old, the classic... The first coop that we designed, it's a four foot by six foot, kind of a stationary coop uh, that has uh, the nesting boxes on the side, so you don't have to go into the coop to get to get your eggs and that type of thing. So, so those are the five coops that are in the the plans library, and uh, 
we'll be we'll be adding more i've got a couple more designs we're working on but uh, uh that's the five that we have right now so what kind of uh you know building skill carpentry skills do you have have to have because uh you shared with me some of the plans that you have for your barns and i i not being a carpenter not growing up with a saw in hand being more nerdy rather than uh handy uh you you break it down in a way that i i do feel like i, I kind of I, I kind of feel like I could do it. And so how, what, what skill level do you think, not what my interpretation is, but what skill level do you think that uh, you have to have in order to put one of these things together uh, effectively? Well, you do have to have some skill. Um, <clears throat> with the, uh, the easiest one to build is probably the Joel Salton style trick and tractor because it's basically a square. <clears throat> And you're building uh, four panels uh, with uh, just a board that goes across the top, a board that goes across the bottom, and then three boards that lay on top. There's no miter joints to make or anything. They just lap over each other and you just screw them together. You know, make sure they're square and uh, um, put the fencing in there. Um, staple it on if you can use needle nose pliers and a hammer to. To grab the staples because you don't want to use your fingers on those staples because you'll get your fingers for sure um, but uh, um, but yeah I mean it's a real simple design if you can I don't know if you can if you've ever run like a handsaw you don't even have to use a power saw I've built I built these you know because you we're using one by three material so you can zip through it real quick with a with just a handsaw and and a screw gun or you, know, you can nail it together, but I would recommend using a, a, a power screw, screwdriver. Um, and uh, the second easiest one, I think, is probably the 36 by 6 foot uh, chicken tractor. And that one you can put together. It's very similar, but there are some angles to cut. But if you watch our video um, guides in the library, I kind of show you how to make those cuts real easy. So you don't even have to... You don't have to measure the angle or anything. You just put the board on the tractor, mark it with lines, and just cut along the lines, and then screw the board back on the tractor. So, so it's really there. Those are kind of those two are really simple. The four foot by six foot uh, kind of stationary coop, I would say that's a little bit more advanced. If you've if you have some experience building stuff like, you know, just woodworking projects, um, it would be good to uh, to have that experience. But if you have, uh, um, maybe you have a friend that can give you a hand and kind of show you some tips and really a couple of hours instruction from a friend that, that knows what they're doing um, can get you really off to the races with that one and with the, the timber shed, the big chicken coop mansion uh, that's in the, in the plans too. So um, I try to simplify the plans as much as I can so that so that the DIYer can 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 handle it very well, very easily, fairly easily. So, okay. So now, in terms of cost, um, I I frequent the you know the local farm stores that are around here. They will remain nameless because they are not sponsors. Mm -hmm. So we're not giving them a free pass on this. No, right. um, but they sell these chicken coops that are stationary for a thousand dollars fifteen hundred dollars yeah. and more yeah. and i looked at these things going man this is kind of flimsy put together like and you still have to build it you're still buying a box of parts and stuff and and so you know when you're talking about building something that's a quality you know put together you know coop like you're talking about uh what are we what are we looking at in terms of price you know, I know obviously you can't go exactly apples to apples because your coops are frankly far better than theirs. But I mean, what are we looking at for something that's not not the uh, the shed, but maybe the one underneath the shed? Well, um, well, for example, I guess I guess the most expensive one would be that four by six coop. Besides the big timber shed, um, the ten by twenty. I'm talking about the four by six coop. That one would probably, I, you know, it's hard to, for me to put a number on it because I usually, 
I being in the barn business, I use my scrap leftover stuff to <laughs> to build all my projects. But if I got to, let me see, there's probably about 300 board feet in that uh, shed or that coop, and 300 board feet. You know, average price is around a dollar, so probably 300 bucks worth of wood. You know, maybe another fifty dollars worth of wire mesh, that type of thing, and screws. Probably, you know, you you might get another fifty dollars worth hinges and screws and that type of thing. So, yeah, probably around four or five hundred bucks for materials. Well, for it that. sounds like you're well under five hundred dollars, and yeah. and to me, that's just a no-brainer. I mean, you could save literally a thousand dollars and have a better quality product. Now, now, what kind of what kind of time? Like, let's say that you're not a beginner, but you're also not an advanced carpenter um, uh, to build that specific coop. What what would be an average amount of time that you think it would take to build that? Well, that coop, it is it is a little time consuming. Our first uh, the friend of mine and I built our first one. Uh, it took us, I think, about two days, so a weekend. You know, about eight hours a day through through the weekend, so about sixteen hours altogether, two guys. So, um, you know, if a husband and wife team did it, and they could probably do it in a weekend, maybe two weekends. Um, the easier that Joel Salatin style one is the simplest one to build, and that one, I think I think we built one one time in about forty minutes. Um, yeah, so it's it's pretty quick. Um, as long as you got all the materials there, and you can cut, you know, it's it's set up so where, you know, you're cutting at whole foot long measurements. You're cutting two foot long pieces, eight foot long pieces, six foot long pieces. There's no inches or fractions or anything like that. So, so you're able to, you know, cut all your pieces. You could even have them cut at the lumber yard, you know, the place where you buy your wood, and come home and just screw everything together. Uh, it's really easier than the, one of those kits because those kits you're, you're part, putting part A with part B with part C and that type of thing. Where this, it's all laid out. You can just, you know, it's it's super simple. So, um, and that one, I would say the cost on that particular tractor uh, is going to be less than a hundred bucks because uh, you can wow. go you can go to even if you go to the lumber yard and buy, you know, one by three furring strips. Um, they're usually, I uh, usually get a dozen of them for like 10 bucks, 10, 15 bucks. You know, they're pretty cheap. And uh, um, you can put, I mean, you got, if you've got a dozen of them, you've got almost everything you need. So, and then, you know, with your wire, you know, you probably done 25, 30 bucks in that and a couple hinges and some screws, you know. Yeah, less than a hundred bucks. You can, you can easily build that. And then a tarp to go over the top or... You know, if you want to go fancy, you can put some some pole barn steel on there or some aluminum roofing, that type of thing. Um, so yeah, so really cheap and reasonable price. Nice. You know. So now here's the big thing that I think the viewers are going to be the most excited about. You have made a special package deal for these coops. You you you've you've offered up these plans at a ridiculous, awesome price, and I want you to talk a little bit about that. Um, so that people can access and, and get get their coop on, if you will. Right, right. That's a good one. Um, the uh, <clears throat> the whole package, I put all five of those plans that I mentioned in the chicken coop plans library. Um, so that's the, the 4x6 stationary coop, the 4x4 knockdown panel coop, uh, the 3x6 uh, kind of a garden chicken tractor coop, the the six by eight or six by ten Joel Salton style chicken coop, and then the big ten by twenty uh, timber shed, which is actually kind of a mini timber frame. It's a mini version of our barns. So if you wanted to kind of experiment with a timber frame, that's the one to go with there. All five of those plans are in that library for twenty seven dollars, and uh, I believe there will be a link below the video for that to go right, right to down that. There. Right down there. Yep. Fear not, it will be there. Cool, cool. And then, uh, um, so yeah, if 
if you want a, uh, some good chicken coop plans to, you know, to have something that you can really, uh, the, the whole package together is, is a, almost a complete package for a small urban to suburban type homesteading operation. Um, really have everything you need, so. Well, I, I like the fact that if you get this package, you may be sitting there thinking to yourself, well, I just want to build this one coop. Well, you, you know, once you get into homesteading, you, you realize that when you're, um, that, that sometimes the plans change. You, you may start out going, well, I just want five chickens and that's it. Well, then once you've gotten bitten by the chicken bug, all of a sudden the next thing you know, you got 30 of them. And now, you know, with this coop plan, uh, kind of having all of them in one spot, that really eliminates the need for having to go back and find another, you know, plan for a new stage in your development of your homestead. And I, I, I think there's going to be huge value in just that alone. But not only that, that's a really, really great deal for all those plans. Um, so thank you. We will have the uh, link down below. Um, but as we kind of wrap up, is there anything you'd like to add to the chicken coop mayhem that we are watching right now happen before the, uh, you know, our, our people? <laughs> well, um, that, uh, yeah, just like you said, Brad, the chickens, once you get kind of bit by that chicken gut, chicken bug, they, they call it chicken math. So your, your chickens start to multiply you, you know, you start to go in the feed store and you see, oh, I want to get a, bring a few more home, you know, or maybe I'll get some ducks or some rabbits or a goat or it just explodes from there. So, Absolutely. So uh, thank you very, very much yep. uh, for putting this awesome package together. Once again, the link will be down below. And uh, I thank you, Aaron Barn Geek, and now officially the King of Coop. So thank you for coming out today, brother, and sharing with with these folks, your awesome plans. Thank you, Brad. All right, you guys, I'm Brad with the Big Family Homestead. Don't forget to go on over there, check out these plans, make sure you get them, you're not gonna regret it. And uh, with that, you guys have an amazing day.